So I just got this 17 millimeter f1.8 and I wanted to share with you some of the reasons I bought this lens and then we'll do a quick comparison with the uh, 14 to 42 kit lens. So I already have a 12 millimeter f2, I have the 25 millimeter f1.8 and I have my 14 to 42 kit lens and my 12 to 40 pro 2.8. So this lens has really not been on my radar at all. And uh, it wasn't really until I started getting into street photography that uh, I, I started feeling there was something missing, right? Uh, because the 12-40 to Pro lens, I just never take that out, you know, because it's just too big and heavy for, uh, you know, doing street work or casual type photography, travel photography. I just, it's just too big and heavy, you know, on my Pen F or my Pen PL8, my M1 Mark II. Uh, and the 25 millimeter is a little bit too tight. It's great for doing portraits on the street, but then, you know, a lot of times I like to do some architectural photography or landscapes, and it's, it's just a little bit too tight for that. Uh, and the 12 millimeter F2 is exact opposite. You know, it's too wide, right? It's great for the architectural and the buildings and things, but then, uh, you know, if I want to do some uh, more portrait type work, uh, it's a little bit too wide. And, uh, it's okay, but again, that's that's kind of why I got this lens. It, it was, it's kind of right in the middle there. It gives me the uh, kind of just tight enough for some portrait work, but then wide enough to kind of do the architectural things. And, you know, being at f1.8, it's very fast, so I can go out at night and, you know, take pictures and still maintain a decent shutter speed and, you know, lower ISOs, hopefully, uh, depending on the light. Sometimes I'm still at 25,000, but uh, in any case, you know, if you're thinking about this lens, I want you to uh, consider that you already have a 14 to 42 kit lens, which makes an excellent travel lens. Uh, and the only benefit that the 17 millimeter at this point, I think, gives you is that it's going to be faster at f1.8. Maybe give you a little shallower depth of field. Uh, but there's other things that this prime lens gives you besides that, and that's the uh, the build quality is very, very nice. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful lens, looks good on your camera, so there's some aesthetics to it as always, uh, for me anyway. Uh, but it also has that manual focus clutch, which I really like, um, with the little focus distance markers. So if you do street photography, you can pre-focus, you can do zone focusing. Um, so it makes, it makes your camera really the perfect street camera as well. But that said, uh, let's go ahead and just do a quick comparison between this and the kit lens because it was a tough decision getting this lens uh, when I already have a very good kit lens uh, and at 17 millimeter, I think it's like at f3.8 or let's just call it f4. All right, here's a very unscientific test uh, between the 14 to 42 kit lens and the 17 millimeter prime. And I've taken four pictures, two with the lenses wide open at f3.8 and f1.8 and then two pictures at f5.6. So let's just start with the wide open uh, pictures. And when you look at these two, they're really close. I mean, this is definitely a little blurrier over here. If we punch in, you can see, for example, like you can almost make out this uh, church steeple and a, there's a street lamp here and then this tree line versus over here, everything is pretty well blown out. You can barely make out what this is, uh, and you wouldn't even know there's a street lamp here. It's almost completely blown out. And as we move in closer to the subject, you can see that the uh, blurry background holds up pretty well, and it's and it's very smooth. It's very very smooth uh, uh, bokeh. Versus over here, it's a little bit busy, right? But let's back off, and you can see that. Honestly, these two pictures, are, I would say, were pretty equal. And over time and over thousands of pictures, you, you will prefer this if you like this kind of look over this. But uh, this by itself to me is not the worth the price of admission to get the prime lens. Now let's, let's just take a quick look at the uh, sharpness of these two lenses wide open. And hopefully you can see this online, but the kit lens... If you look at my hair over here and my skin, the kit lens is definitely sharper than the prime lens wide open. Um, so that's a testament to how good the kit lens is. I mean, I really love this lens. 
and I would not bother with the 17 millimeter and this is really why I held off for so long but the reason I got the 17 millimeters look at the shutter speeds here on the prime lens here I'm at 1 over 3200 versus the kit lens I'm at 1 over 640 now when I go out and I'm doing street photography at night this is a huge huge difference all right so let's say I wanted the kit lens to be at the same shutter speed 1 over 3200 I have to crank the ISO up to about 1000 uh, to get the same shutter speed as the prime lens and what does that mean that's going to introduce a lot of grain it's going to ruin some of the dynamic range and uh, any sharpness advantage this lens has wide open is totally gone at this point uh, and just imagine, you know, even if I wanted to keep the ISO at 200, uh, if my shutter speed on a prime lens is 1 over 100, if I were at ISO 200 on the kit lens, my shutter speed would have to drop down to, say, 1 one fifteenth of a second, uh, in which case any sharpness advantage is going to be gone if we're not on a tripod due to, you know, handshake or subjects moving like people walking everything's going to be blurred anyway so this is why I got the 17 millimeter prime is mainly for this uh, faster shutter speed or lower ISO uh, because of this f1.8 and truth be told if we take this 17 millimeter and uh, let me um, Let me just add a tiny bit of sharpening here. And then let's compare them again. Now if I look at the 17 millimeter here, it's virtually as sharp now. So with a split second click and post processing I can get this uh, prime lens at wide open to look nearly as sharp as the uh, kit lens anyway plus I have the advantage of 1 over 3200 all right now let's look at the uh, both these lenses at f5.6 so at this point you can see that the blurry background and it looks like I got the kit lens over here on the left it's pretty equal now um, very very little difference here but let's look at the sharpness and yeah the kit lens is still very sharp but now the prime lens is just as sharp or equally as sharp uh, maybe a tad bit sharper, but without zooming in another 200%, who's going to know? And that's pretty much it. Um, now, with respect to uh, the movie autofocusing and everything, as long as the lens that you buy from Olympus has the MSC uh, indicator on it, it's going to autofocus just as well as any other MSC uh, designated lens. The older lenses that don't have the MSC, the autofocus in video is not nearly as good. But this 17 millimeter is MSC uh, in, uh, uh, designated and hence has very good autofocusing or as good as any other lens in the Olympus line. And you know, the, the first few minutes of this video, I use this lens the 17 millimeter to record the video so uh, and the autofocus was fine it didn't drift or or uh, hunt or anything I had it on simple continuous autofocus with face detect now while I was putting this video together I noticed that Peter Forsgaard also put a video up today about this lens uh, just purely by coincidence uh, believe me uh, that was not planned at all but uh, you know, I recommend you check his video out as well if you'd like another perspective uh, on this lens. He, he's had this lens a lot longer than I have. Uh, I've only had this lens about a week, so uh, and he takes wonderful pictures. But one of the things that he mentioned in his video was that the lens tends to vignette uh, just a little bit 
you know, in the corners when you shoot it wide open. So I just wanted to show you what that looks like and then how to easily correct that in camera without having to worry about it when you get back into post-processing. If that bothers you, because it's very, very subtle. So if we look at uh, this picture here, uh, you'll notice that the corners are just a little bit dark. And that's not because of the lighting. That is simply the lens causing this little bit of vignetting in the corner. Because if I go to the next picture, you'll notice that it's brighter. Right? Particularly, like, look at these leaves here. You can tell here. Down in the bottom left. See the difference? It's very, very subtle. But I didn't do anything on post-processing. I fixed this in camera. There's a setting in the menu uh, called Shading Compensa Compensation On or Off. And basically Olympus has programmed in uh, you know, all of their lenses into their firmware to correct for this little bit of vignetting or shading that you get in the corners. So if you turn Shading Compensation on, it will adjust for that little bit of vignetting that you get and correct for it and brighten the corners back up to an even lighting versus being a little bit shaded dark. Now the other thing I recommend for this lens is getting a uh, lens hood for it because it doesn't come with one. And uh, you can see the one I got here is just a uh, simple 46 millimeter generic metal lens hood that I bought uh, on Amazon. And uh, so, you know, I'll put a link down below to that one if you're interested in this lens hood. But, you know, the lens hood will protect the lens. It also uh, reduce some of the flare or glare that you get from lighting coming in from the side. A lens hood really serves uh, a dual purpose of protecting the lens and giving you better pictures.